A questionnaire is a set of standardised questions for gathering the same information from a group of individuals. The purpose of using a questionnaire is usually to make comments about the group who filled it out, or to generalise from the wider group to a population of importance for your research. There are two main types of questionnaire. The descriptive questionnaire is designed to find out the extent of a particular topic or issue within a population of interest. Descriptive questionnaires typically ask how many people participate in a certain behaviour or hold a particular opinion. It is important for samples in descriptive questionnaires to be representative of your research population. The analytical questionnaire is set up so that you can explore and explain certain associations and relationships between particular concepts. This style is often used in theory building and theory testing research. Therefore, statistically stable sample sizes are more important than representative ones. Obviously, some researchers may seek to be both descriptive and analytical, and therefore you'll need to have both a representative sample and a sample size appropriate for the statistical processes you are using. Questionnaires can be administered in a variety of ways. Questionnaires can be self-administered, that is, participants fill in the questionnaire by themselves without influence or involvement by the researcher. A traditional method is to mail your questionnaire to your participant. This can become expensive with large sample size, but because it can be personalised, it can also be successful. It is usual practice to include a reply paid envelope to encourage people to respond. Another way to distribute a questionnaire is to hand out the questionnaire at the end of your course, or to leave a pile for participants to collect a particular location, like at the library information desk. Once again, the participants are left to interpret the questions by themselves, and the researcher has minimal influence over the responses. The internet also provides opportunities for self-administered questionnaires. Questionnaires can be sent as an attachment to an email. Participants fill out the questionnaire, save it, then return it to you via email. A more sophisticated way would be for you to send your participants a link to an online questionnaire. And then your participants fill in the questionnaire using their web browser. There are a growing number of companies providing this service. SurveyMonkey is popular. The University of Southampton provides a similar product called iSurvey. Some questionnaires are administered in an interview type situation. Telephone interviews are very common. However, they often have a poor reputation due to overuse by market researchers and telephone sales. Telephone interviews involve the researcher reading out the questions and a limited number of responses to the participant. It's important for the researcher to stick to his or her script so that the format and delivery for each participant remains consistent. Face-to-face -face interviews are very similar. You may have been approached by someone in the high street to answer a questionnaire. They too are used extensively by market researchers and sales. Okay, let's move on to the design of the questionnaire. The first stage of designing a questionnaire is to identify the type of information you wish to collect. Remember, different disciplines will have different focuses. A questionnaire on the use of iPads from a psychological perspective will be quite different from one coming from a sociological perspective, even when they are both about the use of iPads. The questionnaire is used to collect four main types of information. You can collect information about your participants' attributes. You can ask them about their gender, age, ethnicity, almost any demographic information you wish to know. However, it's important to only include questions which are directly related to your study. If age or ethnicity is not a focus of your study, then why are you asking it? We usually use these questions to describe the participants or to check their representativeness, but we can also use them to form subgroups and then compare the responses to other questions. You can also use questionnaires to ask people about their behaviours and experiences. These are questions about what a person does or has done and aim to elicit behaviours, experiences, actions and activities that would have been observable had the observer been present. Knowledge questions 
inquire about factual knowledge and try to determine what the participant knows. These are not opinions or attitudes, but facts. Attitudes and opinion type questions imply some sort of evaluation and attempt to determine how people feel about an issue. These can be difficult to get right as some participants may not have an opinion about your topic and other people will have very strong one-sided ones. The second thing we need to consider is the type of data. Category data, also known as nominal data, is when participants select a category for their responses, such as male or female or indicate their ethnic origin. Sometimes when we analyse these questions, we might code them with a number, such as male equals one and female equals two, but that's just an arbitrary arrangement and no ordering of the categories is implied. Ordinal or ranked data are similar to category data, but instead of just identifying the categories associated with each item, participants ask to rank their preferences for the categories. Continuous data, also known as metric, numerical, interval and ratio data, is gained by any question that can be answered by a number. It could be an open-ended question asking participants to tell you how many times they attend lectures, or it could involve asking them to relate the importance or intensity of some experience. Related to the type of data is the type of response. A simple way to categorise the responses to questions would be to describe them as either being open or closed. Open-ended questions explore the views of the respondent and lead to answers that can be varied in length, topic and style of response. The advantages of open-ended questions are that they give greater freedom of expression to the respondent. This preserves the richness and spontaneity of a response and allows the respondents to qualify their answers. The disadvantages of open questions are that they are time consuming to code and that the researcher may misinterpret a response. Use open-ended questions sparingly, for example, to develop further questions or to explore a topic in depth. Closed questions are more difficult to construct, but easier to analyse and less subject to variance in interpretation. One of the advantages of closed questions is that they are quick to answer, and therefore many more questions can be asked in a given time frame or included in a questionnaire before the respondent gets bored. They are also easy to code, and there is no difference between articulate and inarticulate participants. The disadvantages of closed questions are that they can draw misleading conclusions because of a limited range of response options. Closed questions are usually asked in a pre-coded way where the participant is provided a range of options to tick or to circle. Dichotomous questions are those where only one of two answers is possible. They are the easiest to ask, to answer and to code and there is little danger of interview bias. Yes, no questions are the best known examples. I mentioned before about the type of data. Well, dichotomous questions collect category level data. Multiple choice questions offer three or more choices. For example, you could ask people to indicate which mobile device do they use and give them the choice of iPod, iPad or another. Similar to dichotomous questions, multiple choice questions usually collect category level data. An inventory asks your participants to rate or rank each of the options that are applied to them. This gives you information on their preferences and the relative importance of each category. Long lists should be avoided because respondents generally find it difficult to rank more than five items. Depending on how you use it, an inventory can be either category level data or ordinal level data. Like it scales contain statements which ask your participants to indicate their level of agreement or disagreement. For example, iPads are the greatest innovation in education in the last 20 years. Do you strongly agree, agree, neither agree or disagree, disagree or strongly disagree? Depending on how you use it, a scale can either be ordinal or continuous level data. The design and layout of your questionnaire is important. People get annoyed with poor layout 
and seemingly trivial questions very quickly. Firstly, make sure you provide clear instructions at the beginning and in each section. Also, make sure you write transitional statements between sections or changes in subject matter to help the respondent understand the reasons for the questions. The order of the questions is just as important. Don't skip around from one topic to another, but sequence your questions in a meaningful manner. Start with a question designed to capture the respondent's interest without being threatening. It can be an open-ended question that encourages respondents to express their thoughts about the subject matter. It is important to set them at ease with answering questions and to feel sympathetic towards the research and the researcher. One thing to remember is that early questions inform or prime the reader's thoughts for later questions, so be careful what and how you ask questions. Unfortunately, after there the advice becomes tricky. Some people suggest that you do easy questions first and progressively get harder. Or you do the least intrusive questions early and then move on to more intrusive ones. However, there is also evidence that people become fatigued when they answer questionnaires. So you should do the more important questions early. There is nothing worse than getting half-completed questionnaires that are missing your key questions because they ask those questions last. So you can see a balance is needed. Finally, the use of a questionnaire should be viewed as a multi-stage process beginning with the definition of the aspects to be examined and ending with the interpretation of the results. Every step needs to be designed carefully because the final results are dependent upon the quality of the questionnaire process. Although questionnaires may be inexpensive to administer compared to other data collection methods, they are every bit of as expensive in terms of design time and then interpretation.